world bids farewell to Queen Elizabeth II, Great Britain's longest serving monarch. So how will Charles III's ascendancy to the throne and Liz Truss, now as Prime Minister, alter the United Kingdom's role in the world and relations with the United States? Well, joining us from London is Young Voices UK commentator, Alby Amankona. Alby, it's good to talk with you. So it's definitely a time of transi uh, transition and change for the UK. First King Charles, uh, how do you expect his approach may differ from that of his mother? Good to talk to you too, Gary. Yes, it is, it is a time of change in the United Kingdom. It, it's almost unbelievable to think that this time last week, Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth was still our head of state and Boris Johnson was still our head of government as the Prime Minister. And since then, the leadership of this country has, has completely changed. The change of Prime Minister was predictable. I think most people assumed Liz Truss would win, but it was very, it was a huge surprise to everyone in Britain to see Her Majesty the Queen pass away towards the end of last week. Now, on to the question of King Charles III, obviously he's been wait waiting for this moment to be king his entire life. When he was, when he did an audience with Liz Truss last week, he spoke about how he'd also been dreading this moment his whole life as well. But ultimately, I don't think he will reign in a style that differently to his mother, the late Queen Elizabeth II. How about his faith, Albie? Uh, since her passing, we've heard a lot about the Queen's devotion to Christ. She always saw uh, her role as a defender of the faith. But uh, King Charles uh, recently said he was defender of the faiths. So what does that indicate? I mean, what, what do you expect there? Well, I think what matters with that, Gary, is what he said in his first address to the nation last week, where he reaffirmed his traditional position, which is that the monarch is the defender of the faith. So I don't think we need to get too concerned about, about comments that he has made in the past. I think he's made it very clear that as monarch, he will be defender of the faith, and, and that faith being the Anglican faith. Do you think he's as strong in his faith as his mom was? I mean, the, the queen definitely had a very devout, strong faith. I've seen no indication that King Charles is, is, is not as committed to his faith as his mother was, but the United Kingdom is a, is a different country to when Queen Elizabeth II took the throne. You know, now the majority of people wouldn't necessarily call themselves Christian, so I think he will be bringing the monarchy uh, and indeed the church into the, the 21st century to reflect uh, the changed country that the United Kingdom is today. And in his first address to the nation, King Charles mentioned his son, Harry, and Harry's wife, Meghan, who continue to build their lives, he said, overseas. So Meghan is an American, and they live in California. So do you think Charles will be on better terms with uh, his American daughter-in-law than his mother was, uh, than the queen was? And how might that affect relations with the U.S.? Maybe a visit to America as king soon? As a younger monarch, we can probably expect to see many more international trips than we saw the, the Queen conducting in the final two decades of her reign, where she mostly performed her roles within the realm of the United Kingdom. So I think, yes, I think it's highly likely that we will see King Charles make trips abroad. And what better place to go to than the United States of America, of course, a country which we have a very deep and special relationship with. So that is certainly something which I would like to see. And the king's efforts, of course, are more ceremonial, but England now has a new prime minister, former foreign minister Liz Truss, and she's a conservative, but some folks say she's no Maggie Thatcher. So what can we expect from Prime Minister Truss? A closer relationship with the U.S. than we saw with Boris Johnson? How might it change? I think what we can expect from Liz Truss is probably more of a return to traditional conservative principles of, of low taxes, a pro-business environment, a focus on the family, a focus on self-reliance. That is what she led the UK to believe, certainly during her leadership contest. But one of the first acts that she has made uh, as prime minister is a huge government intervention into the energy market. I'm not sure how familiar you are with the cost of living crisis which we're facing in Europe as a result of the Russia-Ukraine war, but there's essentially a huge energy supply shortage which has pushed up prices and it's essentially making gas and electricity unaffordable for, unaffordable for most people. Uh, I've seen that uh, she pledges to increase Britain's North Sea oil production and also a resumption of fracking. 
Uh, so she's trying to replace Britain's dependence on Russian oil. So what do you make of this in the direction of her policy and efforts to counter Russia in Ukraine? Ultimately, I think these are the right policy decisions. We have to be more energy independent in the UK, and whether or not that is coming from North Sea oil, whether or not that's coming from fracking, or indeed whether or not that is coming from renewables. What matters is, is that we have a, a, an independent energy source in Britain so that we're not to the behest of the global markets in the same way that we are currently, which is causing uh, these huge hikes in energy bills and is, is, is the reason why this huge state intervention costing between 100 billion and 150 billion pounds is happening. Okay, from London, Albi Amancona, Young Voices UK commentator. Thank you, Albi. We appreciate your perspective. Thank you.